Multisensory perception can enable robots to accomplish more complex manipulation tasks. Here is a video clip from the famous movie Wally's Treasures and Trinkets, where the robot Wally interacts with different objects using all of its available senses. As you can see in the video, Wally sees to locate and catch the baseball, hears the impact sound when knocking on the vacuum cleaner, and feels the deformation of the headset when playing with it. In this work, we realize this multisensory perception in practice by equipping a Franca Emica Panda robot arm with three different sensors to enable it to see, hear, and feel, a third view camera to capture the visual data, a contact microphone to receive acoustic signals through vibration, and a gel site tactile sensor on the fingertips of the gripper to measure contact geometry and forces. During data collection, we can capture real-time multi-sensory inputs when a human operator gives the robot action at each time step. At each time step, the inputs are appended with a short time history for each modality and passed into our multi-sensory self-attention model, MULSA, to fuse the sensory information. Our model first encodes sensory observations for each modality using CNNs. Then it fuses the multisensory embeddings by attending to different modalities with a self-attention mechanism. Finally, the model outputs an action prediction over a discrete action space for each task we tackle, dense packing and pouring, which we introduce next. The first task we study is dense packing. The robot grasps an object and learns to fit it tightly into a dense box. In our experiment, we use a peg as the in-hand object and 3D print four different bases as the box. All four bases look the same from the camera video, but have different bumps inside. We have bases with one, a hard slanted bump, which has a hard 45 degree slanted surface, two, a soft slanted bump, which has a 45 degree slanted surface padded with a layer of soft sponge, three, a left flat bump, which is a flat bump located on the left, and four, a back flat bump, which is a flat bump located on the back. To successfully accomplish this task, the robot needs to identify both the location of the base and the local geometry. Here we show the correct policy for each base given by a human expert. Note that on the slanted bumps, the robot can squeeze down if the surface is soft, but must move back on the hard slanted surface. Next, we show the ablation study and compare MULSA with two baseline methods that either do not use audio or do not use touch. In each trial, we provide an observer view on the right that is not used in training or testing, and the three inputs are shown on the left. Here we show a typical scenario where the model fails when not using audio. The robot is confused about the surface material and tries to squeeze down, but finally gets stuck. Here we show a typical scenario where the model fails when not using touch. The bump is located on the left, but the robot moves forward because it cannot recognize where the flat bump is just based on the collision sound. Next, we show the typical failure cases of two baseline methods that use a different mechanism for fusing the three modalities. The two models use all three modalities the same as our method, but they still fail the task. In this same setting, our model can effectively fuse the three modalities and successfully avoid the bump.
Next, we validate our multisensory fusion mechanism by visualizing the aggregated attention score of each modality. We show the attention scores of vision, audio, and touch, and the input from each sensor at the same time. This is a test trial for dense packing on the hard slanted bump. The initial position of the peg is random, and the first step is to move it closer to the base. During this time, the audio and touch mostly remain static, so the model attends to the vision to locate the peg. Next, the robot starts inserting the peg. It can simply go downward until the peg touches the bump. When the contact happens, the model relies on audio to identify the surface material. Here, the audio is generated by the peg scratching the hard surface. And it also uses touch to sense the local geometry. We see the peg is tilting as it slides along the slope located on the front. Based on this information, the model can predict where it should move to avoid the obstacle. Next, the robot moves backward to avoid the bump, and finally pushes down to complete the task. In this final stage, the peg has already passed the bump, so the attention goes back to vision to monitor how deep the peg is inserted. Although the peg is in contact with the walls, the model chooses not to attend to audio or touch because they do not provide helpful information anymore. Besides the four designed bases, we also tackle the dense packing problem using real-world objects in a more challenging scenario and compare our model with two baselines. Here we first show the performance of the two baseline models. The red arrow points to the location where the cup is pushed onto the plate and gets stuck. Both baseline methods fail in this challenging scenario. Here we show how our model successfully and safely fits the cup into the box. The second task we tackle is pouring. The robot grasps a cylindrical container and pours small beads into another container fixed to the table. Initially, the in-hand container may have either 60 grams or 100 grams of beads, which is unknown to the model, and the goal is to pour 40 grams into the fixed container. To succeed, the model needs to locate the two containers and then decide how much to rotate to pour out the beads and when to stop pouring. Here we show what happens if only vision is provided. Vision cannot provide enough fine-grained information, so all the beads get poured out. Here we show the model performance when we use two modalities. Both audio and touch can help the task, but there is still a large error from the desired weight of 40 grams. Here we show the results from the two baseline methods.
we see that they either align the two containers poorly or do not predict the correct timing to stop pouring. Here we show the results from our model. We see the model can properly control the rotation to prevent overflow and decide the right moment to stop pouring. In the end, it achieves the lowest final error among all models. Next, we visualize the aggregated attention scores of each modality as the robot completes the pouring task in a test trial. We show the attention scores of vision, audio, and touch, and the input from each sensor at the same time. At the beginning, the robot is aligning the two containers and it keeps rotating to pour out the beads. In this stage, Vision tells the robot to move forward, and there are only minor changes in audio and touch. As more beads start dropping, we see stronger signals in audio and touch, and the attention shifts towards these two modalities. After pouring the beads for some time, the robot arm must stop rotation at the right moment, otherwise the beads will overflow. To help with this prediction, audio notifies that more beads are being poured into the cup. And the tactile sensor captures the in-hand container dynamics. We can tell from the pose change of the container that as more beads move toward the opening, its center of mass changes, so it begins to tilt. Then the robot holds the container at a fixed pose until the beads in the fixed container reach the desired amount. The last critical decision is when to stop pouring and retrieve the cup. The key observation at this moment is audio. The volume and the pitch of the sound become lower as the beads accumulate. Thanks for your attention.